Welcome to the complete collection of Larry Bird's greatest stories. The first episode of this series was an episode on Kobe Bryant, the complete collection of Kobe Bryant's greatest stories. If you haven't seen it or you did miss the upload, feel free to watch it on the channel. But the amount of support on that video was incredible and I really, really just want to thank all of you guys for that support. Kobe was someone who meant a lot to me, as he did for I'm sure all of you guys too, and hopefully that video did him justice. Today we're looking at Larry Bird's greater stories, and because these videos take such a long time to make, the only thing that I ask is that if you enjoy this video, you can please hit that like button, subscribe if you do enjoy the videos because it does help my channel out, and also comment down below who would you like to see for episode 3. We've done Kobe, this is Larry Bird, which player should I do next? Without further ado, welcome to the complete collection of Larry Bird's greatest stories. Well, you had the bird night. I had the bird the night. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a tough night, man. And, and he would tell you to play and catch it over there and shoot it. Larry Bird, he, uh, he was not a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> he, talked, he talked to everybody. He was talking trash all the time, man. But fun. And uh, they called a timeout, and he turned around and looked at me and said, I'm going to score right here on you. <laughs> and he came back out and hit about 10 in a row on me. And the last one was left-handed. And... He asked me if my mother was watching. It just came out. And he, we never shook hands for 13 years. Well, you had the bird night. I had the bird night. Orleans, yeah, Orleans. yeah that, was, that was a tough night, man. Yeah. That, you know, that, the biggest argument that night is, uh, well, you only scored six on me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But did, you, nobody was guarding Bird, were they? Well, we were trying. You were trying no, to. You know, but when, when a guy is literally coming up to court calling his shots, uh, and, you know, Bird talked a lot of trash. Uh, um, and that's in New Orleans. That's in New Orleans. And you were playing the Hawks, and it was one yes. of those times they were playing some home games down in New Orleans. In New Orleans. I'll never forget that game. He was so hot, he started shooting threes with his left hand. And it was in a neutral site, and I know that Larry was always telling the ball boys, uh, hey, go find out the scoring record. As he was getting taped on the tape table, he would always say, hey, go, go find out the, the scoring record in this gym. Going into that game, I thought there might be a ray of sunshine because one of the bellmen told me that he had heard that Larry and a couple of his teammates may have gotten in a little bit late the night before. So I was saying, hey, maybe Larry won't have a real good night. Bird, the bomb. Bird, the fall away. Bird out of the left corner. The bomb is good. To say that Larry had a hot hand is uh, an understatement without question. He was calling shots off the glass. Who's next? Where you want this one from? Uh, and he just made one after another. Uh, when he got to about the 55th point, you knew it was something special. Even uh, as a player, and that usually doesn't happen, but we we're down so much at the time, you had time to realize the game. We're on the free throw line, and he's like, he literally says, um, left side <laughs> over uh, across the three, and you're listening to him. That's that's a tough feeling. Yeah, that was the one game that I think he tortured Dominique. Uh, uh, he saw Dominique this up and coming player, and and he just tortured him mentally. That game, he tortured all of them. I mean, it was it was mind blowing. <laughs> I think Bird oh. went by the bench one time, too. He fell in a bench. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, <laughs> and he called that one. That was the one where he fell in it. He literally said, oh, no. uh, off the glass into the trainer. And, <laughs> no uh, way. Yeah, and so um, it was a bad night. And it's going to be a three, and it's going to be awful. Piece. And then he said, who wants it? And I think Ricky Brown, I'm not for sure who it was, ran out after him. And he shot this high rainbow. Uh, it goes in. Ricky bumps into him. and accidentally knocks him on our trainer's lap. So it was exactly what he said. Was... Antoine Carr and Cliff Levingston got fined by Fratello, I think. For... And, and Eddie Johnson for celebrating. Celebrating Bird. Yeah, it was the best film session. Every time I see, when I see Mike, we still laugh. God, it, was so a, it was the greatest film session ever because that, back then you didn't have, you know, you watched the real game and just went, you know, with a video. And Mike rewound the celebration 20 times. He just kept, re not the shot, he just kept rewinding it, showing the guys, you remember, they're giving each other high five. And then, and then somebody falls off the bench. Yeah, too. that was Eddie Johnson. Yeah. Eddie Johnson falls off the bench in laughter, 
I mean, everybody was entertained by this. Even, That's even the guys five. on That's the Atla- a, the guys got, on the Atlanta they bench. They got five for that. I heard. Yeah. Watch the watch they the reactions five. on the Atlanta bench. <laughs> <laughs> you see Scotty the Hastings put the yeah. here when you get Now watch punched. watch Cliff Levingston Come on. over here. I think yeah, this is Cliff. Are you kidding me? And our film session was 20 minutes of that. <laughs> Larry, you know, put on a show that night, and I mean, just to get the whole Atlanta bench going crazy. Uh, on some of the shots that he was making down the stretch is a pretty good indication. I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. And he, we never shook hands for 13 years. You at the three-point competition, walking in the locker room, who's playing? Did you really say that? Who's playing for a second? <laughs> yeah, I did. I scored <laughs> so bad. But... <laughs> yeah, when you walked in and asked who was going to get second place in the three-point contest, when you walked up, when you walked in there, what were, what, what were you thinking when uh, when you when you made that announcement to the room, just messing with all those guys like you always did? Yeah, with everybody? I didn't. You know, I had no clue. I never, I never really practiced. I mean, me and Danny used to shoot some mm-hmm. uh, before we went out there. Uh, everybody's sitting there. Everybody's real quiet. You really didn't. You knew the guys, but you never were around. Yeah. Three-point contest at the All-Star break, and Larry walks in and says, "I hope all you guys in here are thinking about second place because I'm winning this." Excuse me. Who were some you know, of the guys? Who were some of the guys in the competition at that time when you walked in? Who was in, in that field? You know, I, I, I come on, I coach. You know. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really remember. Dell Ellis. Um, Dell Ellis. Yeah, Dell. Uh, what's Hodges. the kid that's ref? Yeah, Hodges. Leon Wood. Leon, Leon Wood. Wood. And I'm sitting there with one of my teammates, Leon Wood. It was a. It was a great three-point shooter. Labberg comes in last. And nobody's really saying anything, so I walk in and look around, and it just came out. (laughs) He says, who's coming in second? (laughs) You already know who's going to win this. (laughs) It was so quiet. And after that, I said, oh, man, these guys ain't got no chance. (laughs) And I got lucky because I almost got beat in the first round. (laughs) But what was the reaction after you said that? Like, oh, that's just Larry Legend, or did it get dead silence in there? It was silence. I think they were a little nervous. I like it. I think they were nervous. I had no clue I was going to win it, uh, but um, you know it, it's just part of the competition. Yeah. You see Larry finishing off. Look at that smooth rhythm. The shot, one step back, pick it up. The shot, back and forth. He is like a machine, and the results are almost like a machine. He didn't take off his top yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see what he took off his top. Off. Hey, it's hard to shoot out the bird just made 23. And then the but, walk, uh, the walk off with your hand up. I mean, come on, coach. Come on. Well, I, I was struggling in that final round in Chicago. I know that. And I just got hot there the last two and a half racks. You know, when you're shooting them, you don't know what the score is. Right. But I had a feeling by the way the crowd was going, I had to make the last one. And uh, when I let it go, I, I felt it. Was, you know, sometimes you shoot them, you think they're going in, they don't. But that one there looked perfect all the way. So if it would have bounced out, I would have felt like an idiot. Well, did- but it went in, I got lucky and got the check and went home. Yo! The two-point ball, 17 to 15, defends the long-distance shootout crowd at Chicago Stadium. Uh, he and Ainge, I think, were both in the three-point contest together, yeah. and Larry Larry won the won the uh, won the contest. And then one one day we got on the bus and we were on the bus for a few minutes, and Larry said uh, to Ainge, he goes, "Hey, Danny," and Danny goes. Yeah, Larry goes, who's the three-point king? (laughs) Larry Bird, Uh, he was not a nice guy. Uh, Back then when we flew commercial, we didn't fly private. Um, We played in a Tuesday night game in Cleveland. Matter of fact, there was one game in, in Cleveland. In Cleveland, and he told me where he was going and where he was going to shoot. Nah, I won't hear about it. Okay. Oh, here, bud. It was 92, 91, 92 season, and we was playing the Boston uh, Celtics. It was it was Bird, McHale, Parrish, the, the great three, Ainge, and we was up one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where he was having a pretty rough first half, and in the old days in Cleveland, you walked off the court at, uh, the same way at halftime, and. I kind of puffed up on him and walked beside him and was like, "Yeah, you're one for ten. I was like, that's defense, you know, and um, he just kind of looked at me and said, there's two halves. 
<laughs> and he came back out and hit about 10 in a row on me. And we was up one, mm -hmm. okay? He said, who's guarding me as we come out of timeout? Now remember, I'm a rookie because Price is out because he hurt. Right. He says, who's guarding me? I says, Craig Elo. He says, why you got that white boy on me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put no white boy on me. He said that was the most. Now remember, Larry Bird is white. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one was left-handed, and he asked me if my mother was watching. I think the story that sums up Larry the best was <clears throat> we had a game on Wednesday night in New Jersey. <clears throat> Snowstorm hits Cleveland. We're at the airport at 7 in the morning. Flight's canceled at 7. It's canceled at 8. It's canceled at 9. It's canceled at 10. Canceled at 11, 12. We finally leave about 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon. We fly up to New Jersey. Now the storm has kind of moved into Jersey. And the bus driver says, well, I can't get to the, air I can't get to the hotel into the arena. I can only go to one place. Well, we had a game that night. We go to the arena. So we get to the arena and I mean, we're dragging and we're sitting on the locker room and, you know, and everybody's kind of, you know, we're tired and, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the coach gives a little bit of a speech of, come on, man, guys, we're playing basketball. Let's get ready to go. And Larry stands up and Larry says a couple other few, few choice words. <laughs> and he says, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take it out on their rear ends. So I was like, oh, all right, so let's go. So we go on the floor. Elbert King sitting there. And Larry walks up to Elbert King and goes, don't take this butt whooping personally. I've been eating hot dogs all day. And then Albert King looks at him like, you've been eating hot dogs all day. What's that got to do with me? <laughs> and we went out and just hammered him. I mean, we, we, we terrorized him. And that was Larry. There was no excuses. I mean, he just played. And I tell you, that was just his competitive nature. But a day when you fly all day and eat hot dogs in the airport, best thing was Albert's look on his face like, what hot dogs got to do with me? <laughs> I still love the Xavier McDaniel story. Anybody better than Larry Bird? No, Larry's probably the best trash talker. And he, you know the best thing about Larry now? He's so buttoned down now. You know, he's just like, you know, I didn't do that. Just, man, that guy lies. He, he was the best trash talker. <laughs> can, can and tell, he denies can you, everything. Can you and tell he, a Larry story? I haven't, I haven't heard much of him, you know, any stories about him talking trash. And he's so quiet. Yes. It's just every other time. And I never got to play on the court or see. But can you tell a story like oh, well, some you I'd remember? Say one of my, there's a million of them. But one of my favorite ones is, we're playing Phoenix and we're way ahead, okay? The Celtics were playing the Suns and... We're down in the old saddle dome that they had outside. Right, right. And Larry, you know, we're playing good as a team. Larry has the worst fourth quarter known to man. I mean, he's throwing the ball to the other team. I'm like, good Lord, we had like a 15 point lead. Next thing you know, we're down two. And I'm like, oh, how in the world are we gonna lose this game? Man? So we have a play, out of bounds play. I'm taking it out and um, Larry says, I'm gonna bust off the play and I'm just gonna come out and I'm gonna shoot a three and I'm like, and Larry says, I'm going to bust the play. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot a three. And, and I'm like, Bertie, let's just get into overtime. I'm going to Robert. You know, Robert, we need to get into overtime, man. Right. Try to get this ship right because we're sinking, man. Right. I tell you right now. Celtics are down by two points. And Bird is out by the three-point line. And he's being guarded by a guy named Johnny High. And Johnny High is sort of backing away from Bird. And Bird says, hey, Johnny. You better come up and, and, and guard me a little closer. I'm just going to get the ball and shoot a three, and game's over. You know, Larry not only tells me that, he walked by the bench and says, you know, typical birdie, just real slow. So he tells us, tells the Phoenix bench, um, <laughs> tells the coaches, yeah, I'm just fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. <laughs> fixing to bust a three on your guys and go home. And, you know. Johnny High sort of, sort of smiles and laughs about it. <laughs> and so he breaks the play. And then the ball comes into Bird. He just turns around and shoots a perfect three. Shoots the ball. As the ball's in the air, he kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so. <laughs> he's running to the locker room. Larry hits it. He looks at the bench and goes, told you so. Unreal, bro. Oh. As he's walking off, he puts an arm on Johnny High's shoulder and he goes, Johnny, I told you to come out and guard me. That was Birdie. I just he had the confidence, man. That dude had so much confidence. He talked to the coaches. He talked. He talked to everybody. He was talking trash all the time, man. But fun, great competitor, man. And I, I, just, <laughs> I just started laughing. I was like, oh man, uh, you know, it, I, 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 it's just one of those ones where he just kind of he has such <laughs> supreme confidence, and it was just. But I, I, uh, that's the one when you when you were back in, and Larry went in and said, well. 
I won the game in the first three quarters, then I lost it in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, excuse me. Then I won it at the end. He goes, my record tonight is 2-1. and one. <laughs> We all just kind of laughed. Bird used to tell people, I remember he told me a story about Xavier McDaniel. Mm. He said, hey, X-Man, yeah. Hey, X, I'm going to get the ball right here. I'm going to shoot a jumper right in your face. It was a tie game. They had the ball, and DJ was stalling the basketball. And um, Larry was kind of standing. I was probably behind him, like, denying him the ball. And uh, they called a timeout. And he turned around and looked at me and said, I'm going to score right here on you. And uh, I said, I know you will. I'll be ready. High game, 13 seconds to play, Celtics basketball. During the timeout, I'm going through a play, and about that time, Larry steps in and says, uh, Coach, uh, why don't you just give me the ball and tell everybody to get out of the way? That's Larry. If he wants the ball, he wants the ball. After the timeout, we walk back on the court, and then Xavier was guarding him. So he tells Xavier, he says, I'm getting the ball. And Larry said, I'm going to get it right here, Ed, and I'm going to shoot it in your face. He hit it and looked at me, and he was like, damn. I didn't mean to leave nothing on the clock. He shot a shot right in my face. I just looked back and the ball just went in, hit all net. And uh, he said, uh, I told you so. And you know, he was like, I didn't mean to leave two seconds on the clock. He wanted to shoot it with zero seconds on the clock. I walked back to the sideline like, dang. Now, a lot of people don't know this. You, you probably know this, Dan, but Larry Bird was one of the biggest trash talkers in basketball. And a lot of people say, really? You know, they thought it was Reggie or Charles. Larry Bird talked more trash on the basketball court than, than anybody I've ever played against. And he told us two, he told me two things one game. You know, our rotations, uh, double teaming Kevin McHale always had to rotate to the corner, and Larry Bird was the one shooting it. You know, so he shot one, and I mean, I, I'm trying to block this shot, and he, he would just tell me, Scott, you're a little too late. You know, a little too late. So we playing him. In the last, the last play, he says uh, to James Worthy, he says, you guys don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go right over there at that corner. <laughs> he said, they're going to set a screen for me. We're taking the ball out. He said, I'm going to curl right over. And he's telling us to play. He's telling us to play before they even take it out. He said, I'm going to go right over to that corner, and I'm going to catch it, and I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to tie the game or win the game, whatever the case may be. They take the ball out, and I think it was either Danny or, or, or um, DJ? the late, great DJ. Yeah. Take the ball out. The man curled right to the corner, caught the shot, <laughs> shot a three, and game made over. It. It's like, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> this is my Larry Bird story. I go to shake his hand. I'm a rookie. I'm playing against the Boston Celtics in the Boston Garden. I'm going to shake. And Larry put both hands behind his back. He wouldn't shake my hand. I said, okay, he's just getting into the game. <laughs> First play of the game, he said, you don't even belong in the league, Holmes. And he shoots a three. Now, I wasn't mad that he made the three. But I said, this something this this called me Holmes. <laughs> and, and he and he came down and did it again, so I'm pissed, you know. So the next time down, see me on the break in that pitch, and I jump up and I throw it down on him, man. I mean, he fouls me. And he said, Hey Rook, I like you. You got heart. He said, uh, I like you. You got heart. But I'm still getting 30 on you tonight. <laughs> so, but I'm still getting 30 on your ass. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's who he was. Didn't Bird shoot left-handed for an entire game against Portland? Larry told all of us and the media, he said, tomorrow night's the last game of the trip. I'm going to play this one left-handed. I, I remember because I was there, and it was, it was at a time when, um, you know, McHale was still coming off the bench. And uh, so he had, he scored the first eight points of the game left-handed. <laughs> and, Jer and, Jer and Jerome Kersey was guarding him at the time. And, and, and I remember this because we had a great trash-talking team. I mean, we had ML Carr, we had McHale, we had Bird, we had, um, you know, Ainge was a yacker. I mean, we, we just, we, we, had, we had guys with, with great creativity with that. And, and, and I'll never forget it. McHale, Mikhail yells out, hey, Jerome, wait till you start shooting right-handed. <laughs> you know, I mean, but, like, you, you know, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about one of the great, the great, obviously great players, great competitors. Um, but Bird was a great artist, too. Who's got Larry Bird stories? 
Brad Doherty told me this story when he was uh, like second year in the, in, in the league and they were in the playoffs against the Celtics. Down one, Larry Bird catches the ball in a deep corner and he steps back for a three. And before he takes the three, he's like, oh, wow, he's, gonna, he's going for the win. He's not going for the tie. Larry Bird catches the ball in the corner. I take off running out at Larry Bird. And right when he's getting ready to shoot, I jump. And he head fakes him. And as I go by, <laughs> I go by him, he tells me, he says, fly, Bird. And as he head fakes him, now it's 3-2. He hits him on the butt with the ball. And then he shoots it at the buzzer. And the <laughs> confidence that hit him yeah. on the butt as he flew by him <laughs> trying to block a shot. And, he, and I go right by him. He shoots the ball. It's nothing but nylon. I, I remember the time when Larry got on the roll, started shooting the ball. Just, every shot was going in. Goodbye. She's gone. I guess the two-pointer was too close. When he ran by the bench, he goes, that's a heat check. Just see how hot I am. All right? He runs by Frank Layden, who's the funniest guy in, in the league. And Frank is coaching, and Larry says to him, hey, Frank, don't you have anybody on that bench who can guard me? He goes, so nobody out here can. Frank looked down at the bench and goes, no. <laughs>